You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Big old blowout win of the Golden State Warriors in the Smoothie King Center. Game 3, 119-100. We'll recap the glorious win with stats, facts, and interviews from Coach L. Gentry, A.D. and Drew Holiday to chime in. And, of course, we'll hit you with our topics going forward. Before we get started with the show, let's give you a round of applause for joining the Pelican Post Game Report. Thank you for joining us today. Also, thank you for donating. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for sharing us. Thank you for subscribing to us. Thank you for all you do uh, to assist here at the PRO Media Network, Pelican Post Game Report, and other podcasts that we do uh, because of you. So thank you very much. And uh, as always, we're going to bring in Pelican Eye View contributor DC to the fold. DC, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Super fragilist is Espiocia Aladocious. Yeah, great. Well, we have a we have a nineteen point blowout win. Magical. A go of the Golden State Warriors <laughs> blew them out. So I mean, it, it's absolutely fantastic. Feels good, and we're gonna recap this game. But let's get into the rundown before we get jump right off into it. And uh, we have a few topics we're gonna cover. We're gonna talk about uh, the Pelicans' defense. We can't overlook the defense that the fact that the Pelicans held the Golden State Warriors to 100 points in this game. You know, the Pelicans were completely balanced tonight. They played very, very well. I mean, above well. They were excellent defensively as well as offensively to hold them to 100 then, and then blow them out by 19. That says a lot. We're going to cover that. Also, we're going to talk about the referees. Of course, in the last show, I got a lot of love. We got a lot of love from fans because we were outspoken about the referee situation. We got a lot of thumbs up, a lot of comments. Thank you guys for that. And we're going to, you know, we're going to speak about some of that in today's game to show you that the trend continued from the first two games to this game, but it didn't matter. You know why? Because the Pelicans defensively and offensively removed the game from the referee's hand as well as the Golden State Warriors. We'll cover that topic as well. And then we'll talk about the bench reserves, the, rever- the reserves that the Pelicans, Ian Clark came off the bench, the role players, uh, e, uh, uh, such as Rajon Rondo, his contribution, a double-double in reverse. Uh, we're going to talk about Ian Clark's contribution, you know, sticking it to his old team, putting up 18 points off the bench. Solly Hill comes in off the bench after hearing us talk crap about him. Another game he came out and and it was pretty good, had nine points uh, uh, shooting three-pointers and played pretty good defense as well. So the Pelicans... Also, the role players like Etwan Moore deserve a lot of credit besides our big guys, uh, Anthony Davis, who posted major numbers tonight, as well as Drew Holiday, who just was defensively just out of, out of worldly again. And Nikolai, the ultimate glue guy, he had his contributions as well. We're going to talk about that. And then on the back of the podcast, we'll preview game number four, Sunday afternoon in the Smoothie King Center. Pelicans have an opportunity to even up this series going back to Golden State for game five, and which is going to be a crucial week next week, people. Possibly toward the end of the week, we'll know the you know what's, what'll be happening between these two teams because it's, it's getting real now. When we talk about game four and then behind game four, game five, three games left, we get be about to get real. It's for the marbles going to the Western Conference, uh, fi- uh, Western Conference Finals. You know, so we're gonna get into that anyway. But let's start it off, DC, and talk about the the Pelicans one nineteen to one hundred win over the Golden State Warriors. Fantastic win, my friend. Huge, fantastic win. I love every part of it. the Pelicans. Won every quarter of this game except for the second quarter which they only lost by three points i mean amazing amazing win man uh 
they obviously knew what they were up against because they looked like they had it on on their mind from the get go to not let this game be tight to where they could lose it based on the referees. And they they went out in every category that it mattered. They dominated the Warriors, man. Um, their free pro percentage is probably the only place they didn't get them in uh, the fast break points. But every other category, they pretty much owned. They did. And they went out there as a team on a mission, man. They they kept the same uh, pressure and, and pretty much kept their foot on their neck the whole game, man. And uh, I remember us talking – throughout the season about what the Pelicans could be if they decided to play for four quarters instead of three. And tonight, they played for four quarters. And you see what you got. They beat the best team in the league the defend- in a playoff game. The defending world they champion. To, keep, to stay alive, man, because they lost tonight. Getting that 3-0 hole is pretty much it. Playing with their back up against the wall, the Pelicans came off swinging, and they knocked the, the Warriors on their butts at least in game three, one nineteen yeah, one hundred. And if you look at Anthony Davis numbers, we're gonna play uh we're gonna get to Al Gentry in just a second. Let's give me a give you a couple of little rundown on some of the numbers. Anthony Davis, thirty three points on he was uh from fifteen to twenty seven shooting from the field. He was one of three from downtown. Uh he went to the free throw line, believe it or not. He had two of three from the free throw <laughs> line, finished with eighteen rebounds on the night. Uh, he didn't have any blocks. That's surprising. But Andy Davis was huge in his game. Drew Holiday, 20, I'm pretty sure 21 he had some points. Blocks. They just didn't put him down. <laughs> they didn't count I can as recall a Recall a few plays where he, he did block the ball, but it's not registered. I guess to they him. didn't give him no credit. No, they didn't. Twenty can't get a half a block, right? No, they nothing. gave two of them to Drew Holiday. <laughs> they did, and, you know. But Drew Holiday. Speaking of Drew, 21 points for Drew Holiday. He. Had seven rebounds and five assists in the contest. Nikolai Meritic, 16 points, wait, 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 wait. 13 rebounds. Stop right there. Drew Holiday got the most important stat that you did not say. Drew Holiday played Kevin Durant all game, and he held Kevin Durant 22 points. We're going to get to that. We're going to talk cannot, about it. You cannot not we, mention that. We, <laughs> we, 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 we're going to mention it. We just got to get you the statistics. We got to get you the statistics first. We're going to mention it on the defensive topic. That's a stat. We're gonna That's talk. Dead. We're gonna talk about it on the defensive end. Uh, Nikolai Miritich finished with uh, 16 points. He had 13 rebounds in the effort, and then of course Etwan Moore had a uh, conservative 13 points for Etwan uh, on five of 11 shooting from the field. Playoff Rondo not so much in the points category, but everywhere else 21 assists, 10 rebounds, four points, 10 11 shoot for him, and of course the bench production from Ian Clark 18 points from Ian Clark. On 7-11 field goal shooting, he was 3 from 5 from downtown. Solly Hill in 14 minutes contributed 9, nine points in the game on 3 of 6 from the downtown. Darius Miller chalked in 5 points. So the role players, as well as the reserves, got in it to help the Pelicans uh, steady this win. Let's listen to what Coach L. Gentry has to say about the win the Pelicans uh, had over the Golden State. We knew coming Warriors home that, uh, that we would have a great crowd. Uh, we had a great crowd the last two games, and then obviously when you uh, are playing the world champion, uh, world champions, and uh, they come into your arena, you know everybody that, that's going to be in the stands are going to want to try to push you over the top. I thought the crowd was absolutely great from start to finish. Uh, you know this is just a really really hard team to play against. You know you get a lead, they take it away. You get a lead, they take it away. And the thing that we kept trying to say to our guys is that you just got to remain consistent in what you're doing and you got to stay within the game plan. And, you know, we got to be consistent with what we're doing in the game plan. And I thought we did a real good job of that. We didn't panic uh, when they make those runs because it's scary when, you know, Steph makes a three and Clay makes a three and then Draymond makes a great play going to the basket. You just got to some kind of way be able to withstand that. And I thought we did a real good job of that. Coach, can you talk about the uh, bench production tonight? First with um, Solomon Hill coming in and hitting some big shots in the first quarter, and then in the second half, Ian Clark doing an amazing job. Yeah, I thought Ian played. Uh, I thought he played great, and uh, I thought Solomon did a good job of uh, coming in and just making shots. Uh, they've kind of not guarded him in this series and left him open. I thought he shot the, the ball with a lot of confidence. Coach, over here to the, to the left. I, I know it was three years ago, but during that Portland series, Anthony Davis had spoke to 
how much the game three loss to the Warriors three years ago stuck with them, blowing a 20 point lead. How much do you feel like a game tonight where you're able to build a lead and then control it through the second half shows their growth in that type of situation? Uh, well, I mean, obviously it's going to stick with you. I thought <clears throat> I thought they had played a, you know, I was I was on the Warrior bench. Then I, can somebody give me water? Uh, I was on the Warrior bench. I thought that uh, they played a great game. And, you know, because I was on the Warrior bench, it made it so scary tonight. You know, obviously, I was there when Steph started making threes and, you know, all of a sudden, Clay made threes. And, and before you know it, you know, the 20-point lead was nine points, then seven points, and then all of a sudden, Steph made a shot out of the corner, which, by the way, I have a picture of that on my phone that I've kept you know, all of these years, uh, and now I can erase it off. But, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know so they're, they're just a scary team. You know, you never feel comfortable. You know, even when he took his guys out, uh, I was like, eh, let's play two more minutes before we take the guys out because you're just never comfortable with that team. Coach, uh, what did you just think about the way Anthony controlled the second half, especially on the boards and the way he, you know, controlled the way the tempo of the game and all of that? Well, I felt real good when doing one time out, he said, we're not losing this game. I don't care what, we're not losing this game. And then I thought he started to, you know, do some things to, to help dominate the game, really. I thought he did a good job of playing in space tonight. Uh, he wasn't fortunate, forcing the situation. I thought he did a good job of of taking advantage of post-ups when he could, uh, going quickly so they couldn't double. So, you know, I just, I just thought overall it was a good team win. Alvin, you talked about Nico playing with more confidence here on your left. You talked about Nico playing with more confidence here at home. Did you see that from him tonight? Oh, definitely. Uh, I, you know, and I don't know, like, I, it's Coach I L. Gentry breaking it down, man. Uh, saying it's a good team win, win for the Pelicans, and I can go one say it's a. Man. It's a, it's a big win for the Pelicans to stay alive in the series because if you go tree down on Golden State, man, that's a wrap. But looking at some of the statistics, D.C., the Pelicans from the field, 48 out of 96, 48 from 96, 50 percent on the, on the night shooting versus the Golden State Warriors who shot 38 percent. 35 of 92 Pelicans were 45 percent from downtown, 14 of 31 the Golden State Warriors were 29 percent from nine for 31, of course. And this is the stat about the referees is that the fact that they allowed the Warriors to go to the line 26 times, converting 21 of them. And the Pelicans only got, only had allowed to go to the line 12 times and they converted nine of 12 for 75 percent. So another a big disparity on the free trolls once again. Yep. But nonetheless, they still get the win. <laughs> 36 with, points in the, in the paint. So. It wasn't the taking the paint that have a lot to get all them free throws. Yes. Speak on that. Uh, talk about what Coach Gentry talked about. Talk about uh, the Pelicans, how they were able to stifle, and particularly how Golden State were able to run the offense before the break. Well, Golden State knew it, that he had a pack up plan, and he basically employed it tonight. Um, you can see they ran a lot of zone, I guess, to your chagrin. I know you said they shouldn't do that, but they actually uh, were able to make it work. And those switches and, and passing players along seem to slow, seem to slow them down. Um, they held Steph Curry to 19 points, held uh, Kevin Durant to 22. Clay Thompson, you know, went Clay Thompson. So you can't hold everybody down. But uh, none of their role players really got off either. So I think it was a whole team effort in, uh, in doing this tonight. And I like what Coach said about uh, AD came in that huddle and said, no matter what, we're not going to lose this game. And I think he showed that because he had a bad shooting night. And for AD to get 33 tonight, for me, this is one of uh, his better performance, performances in the playoffs because he had to fight through all type of adversity. We saw he was getting fouled on the inside. Um, I think he should have been a little more aggressive on some plays to make them call fouls, but... Uh, he was kind of flopping a little, trying to hope he get the call. And I don't, don't want to see him do that next game. I want him to play through it. But this was the first time I seen AD get 33, and it was hard. It was a hard 33 tonight. And um, <clears throat> he did a lot more on the defensive end. And he was, he, was, he was insane rebounding the ball, man. He was going after every ball. So 
everybody on the team, I pretty much can pick out something and say that they did excellent. Uh, Solomon Hill came in, dropped three three pointers back to back. Rondo had assists crazy. Ian Clark came in and gave you everything he had, dropped 18 points off the bench. Meritage had a good game, very efficient. So, uh, Drew Holiday didn't shut down Kevin Durant, that's impossible. But he held him to 22 points, which is very impressive. So, it was a solid team win, man. And if they play like that, like we've been saying, there ain't nobody in the league they can't beat. Absolutely. The Pelicans able to do it to the Golden State Warriors. They take away game three. They now trail two to one in the second round series. Going into game number four Sunday afternoon in the ruckus Smoothie King Sunday is going down. But anyway, about to go into our first break. When we come back, we're going to hit the rest of our topics. We're going to finish up with some more interviews from Andy Davis and Drew Holiday. And we're going to recap game. We're going to preview actually game four coming up. On the other side of the break, you're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Bound. Go to www thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash i dash view I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the sports coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, we are the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO. Old Media Network Playoff Edition. It's the Pelicans Plummel. The Golden State Warriors by 19, 119 to 100. Blowout win. Biggest lead they had this game was 26 points by your Pelicans. Putting up a huge affair as far as the rebounds. Some of the statistics go 54 rebounds uh, total for the uh, for the Pelicans. 44 by Golden State Warriors, 36 assists by the Pelicans over Golden State's 22 assists. That's a major stat. Although the, Pel- the Golden State Warriors did win the steal battle 11 to 7 and the block battle 4 to 3. Pelicans turned the ball over 15 times in the game. Golden State 12 to no avail. Pelicans still do enough to win this game. Anthony Davis was the man with the plan. 33 points, 18 rebounds, and the most excellent performance in this contest to help wheel his team to a huge win against the defending champion, Golden State Warriors. Before we finish up on our commentary, let's go to Andy Davis and Drew Holiday's post-game commentary. I don't really think we thought about it, honestly. (laughs) I didn't didn't think about it at all. Our our team was so completely different. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, Uh, we had a different focus, I think, this game, Uh, especially toward the end of the game. We know, especially in this league, being up 20 doesn't really mean much, but, um, I think we executed the game plan and, and, and did a good job of bringing the energy from start to beginning and help from the crowd. They were they were awesome. Sorry. Yeah, no way. 
Um, one of the things noticed tonight was that, you know, guys came out shooting the ball very aggressively, especially Solomon, who had been struggling, Ian, who hadn't really been hitting either. But as, as a whole, it just seemed like after the first two games where you shot it kind of poorly from outside, there was no hesitancy tonight. Was that something that you guys focused on, just not being afraid, not being uh, losing any confidence in your ability to score? Well, I think we all had confidence, but like I said, we we're, were back at home. Uh, back at home, and you, know, you always shoot better at home, I feel like, and guys made shots. Like I said, guys made shots and uh, shoot around this morning, um, and they just carried over to the game. So uh, when you're back at home and the crowd's behind you, um, you play with a lot more confidence, and we're able to make shots and open up the floor. Drew, kind of on the same question as that, but when Solo can come down and hit those three threes, how much does it help you guys from a confidence perspective to get everybody involved? Um, it's huge. Uh, I think it opens up the lane, especially for Solomon to come out and knock, knock down those threes. Uh, they were so wide open where he has to take them. Uh, that can be a lot of pressure on somebody, but him stepping up and knocking those in, I, I definitely felt like opened up the lane for Anthony to be able to post up and them not double team. AD, uh, Alvin mentioned that you kind of during a huddle or a timeout that you kind of said, we're not losing this game. Like, no matter what, we're not going to lose this game. <laughs> Can you take us through that moment? When did it occur? And what kind of prompted you to say it? Um, I don't remember exactly when it was, but, uh, I mean, that was, a, that was the message. You know, we, we, we can't lose this game. Um, you know, it's always tough to come back from 0-3, but um, – our mindset is to go out there and play, you know, do what we're supposed to do, follow the game plan, and, you know, whatever results happen, happen. Um, and we followed the game plan to a T tonight and was able able to come out with the win. Uh, I said, guys made shots, so it's a lot easier, you know, to play and, and, and try to win, but, um, and get to the free throw line. So, um, like I said, when guys making shots and, and we get to the line, you know, we able to dictate the pace, and I think we did that tonight. Over here for both of you guys. You know, sometimes a strategic adjustment or just being assignment sound can tip the balance between winning and losing. Other times it's intangibles like energy and, and things like that, aggression. Which one do you think tonight was more influential in the outcome? Uh, I think aggression, honestly. Um, guys just coming out, just being aggressive, uh, both ends of the floor, um, not just offense. You know, you know these guys, Drew Rondo, Ian, uh, Etwan, Solo out here. Um, Chasing their guards and, and KD and making it tough on them and <clears throat> us as bigs just you know doing what we're supposed to do. But uh, I think everybody did their job tonight. That's you know, Anthony Davis, Drew Holiday, giving they chi chi chiming in on their commentary after the game. Big focus on the Pelicans, really to push past this game. A determination by Anthony Davis, the superstar of the team, to say, "Listen, man, we're not gonna lose this game to this team. We got to step up and we got to play." And they handled business. They took care of things that need to be took care of, and they handled it. Uh, DC, let's move uh, into the realm of talk about some of these topics. Now, we made mention of some of the, the Pelicans' defense. Let's expound on that, how really tough it is to hold Golden State Warriors to 100 points while scoring and, and beating the team by 19 and holding, suppressing four, in my opinion, four Hall, Hall of Famers on that team and, and a very excellent bench as well to hold that team to 100 points and then outscore them by 19 in the playoff in the second round playoff series is an amazing fact. I mean, that's just amazing to me, period. Let's expound on that defense uh, and talk about the Pelicans' role. Four All-Stars this year. Uh, enough said right there. <laughs> like, how do you stop four All-Stars? Uh, they found four. a way to do that tonight. Very tall task. Uh, you really don't see it happen that often throughout the season. I I don't remember a game where the Warriors haven't scored under 100 points. Maybe they had one at some point during the season, but this is extremely rare. So for them to do that, you know it was just more than them having a bad shooting night. It was also good defense. It was also the energy of that crowd, man. We had 1,800, I think, uh, 1,155 people in uh, attendance, 18,155 uh, people in attendance. And that's over capacity. We only hold like 17,000 something. So, you know, the arena was rocking, man. You seen them towels waving. They was getting on the refs. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that intensity has something to do with it uh, as well. I guess you could say that the 13th man, right? <laughs> um, or the 7th man, whatever way you want to put it, 6th man. But anyway, I think Drew Holiday and the job he did on Kevin Durant set the tone for the whole team. 
and it motivated everybody to do their job, uh, like the Patriots would say. And they did exactly that. AD was AD. He's always doing his thing on defense. But it was just an excellent team effort, man. I almost had to check and keep looking at teams to just make sure I could believe in what I'm watching. Because it was it was amazing in that first quarter to see them. They were dominating the Warriors in the first quarter. And then you think, okay, well, you know, this this has to turn around. And they made a run in the second. And then we were like, oh, well, they, shit, eight points. Man, I hope we can hold on. And they came out and showed out in the third, man. You know, showed out in the third. Yeah, you're right, D.C. Completely took the game away, so. Absolutely. It was a, it was a very encouraging sight. And uh, I believe the series is going to go all the way to seven games, man. We're going to be in for the long one. We made right. that we made the commentary. I remember we talked about it. And I remember commenting to one of the uh, commentators out there about it. Uh, some of our commenters about it. They asked us about whether we th- how far we thought. It. I said it'll be a seven game series, no doubt about it. Twenty six points tonight from Clay Thompson. He led the Warriors. Uh, behind him was of course twenty two from Kevin Durantula. 19 points for Steph Curry. He cooled off mightily. And then behind those three, 11 from Draymond. Finally seen a little bit of that run? No? Well, I mean, that's probably was the probably was the case. Good ride, <laughs> well, let's th- let's talk about the Pelicans reserves and the and the role players and reserves. Now, I've heard great players mention this statistic. Uh well, not so much a statistic. I guess you can call it more of a fact. That role players, and I agree to this wholeheartedly, a thousand percent. Let's just put it to you like that: that the fact that when you're at home and uh, and you're in a uh, any regular season or playoff environment, especially in a playoff environment, role players, bench players, show up better at home. They're more comfortable at home, and that showed today as uh, Ian Clark really lit up for 18. Uh, you know, yes, Solly Hill. He came out of his shell with nine points on three. Uh, hitting the three three threes from the chair from downtown, and then he even had a contribution from Darius Miller in the game. So the role players, as well as uh, Rajon Rondo and uh, Etwan Moore, those gay guys really had effective moments that really they played wholeheartedly as a team. Now let's speak about that. Let's talk about the Pelicans' role players and the bench players stepping up in the game at home to help this team secure the win. Oh, yeah, uh, Ian Clark was the bench. <laughs> you know, he came in, and he took over, man. Every time I looked up, he was hitting three. Uh, that was a very big part of us winning this game because uh, when things were getting tight, the Warriors looked like they would be making a run. It would be a player like Ian Clark basically finding a way to get open, hitting that three. And Solomon Hill came in early in the game, hit three, hit three pointers in a row, and I think that that fired the whole team up, man. Uh, especially in the last game, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't hit the side of the barn. So to come in and hit three three pointers, and they're leaving them wide open. And you heard Drew Holiday make reference to it. Um, that 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 should show you how important it was um, for him to do that. And a lot of his teammates, they really believed in they believed in him, you know, after that. And he played good defense as well. So the whole dynamic with uh, Solomon Hill and Ian Clark being able to handle this business. It's a big part of the team victory. Yes, sir, indeed. No doubt about it. The Pelicans were able to take care of business defensively, the role players, and and, exep- and then the, the reserves really helped in a major capacity. And uh, Anthony Davis did a lot, but he didn't do too much where he'd be worn out. And I think these guys be ready for, su- for Sunday. And I just and to speak about your comment about the arena, um, I just love the fact that I've seen the arena come come to life for playoff basketball. It's been a long time right. coming. I, I really, and, and for a long time, we watched arenas like OKC's arena, and we watched these other arenas in Houston and uh, some of these other perennial playoff clubs get the opportunity or the, uh, I guess like you could say the privilege or the honor to watch their teams compete in the playoff environment. And it's totally different than anything that you might want to experience. And the Big Easy definitely is a playoff city. As far as the Saints go, Saints was in the playoffs. Now the Pelicans are in the second round of the playoffs, much similar to their big brothers. Of course, they were able to take it to the next round of the playoffs, and they are in it. This team is not looking to just march out of there in uh, in the first two series. They're looking to try to dethrone Golden State 
uh, you know, pushing into the Western Conference Finals where they can make a run at Houston. So, I mean, I just love the atmosphere of what's happening down in the Smoothie King Center. Uh, let's move to our next topic, no DC. Let's let's talk about uh, the referees. Of course, this was a popular topic that we, you know, we spoke about and we kind of touched on it, uh, you know, and, and kind of broke the norm. For most people, like to just ignore it and pretend like it doesn't exist. But a lot of people that's that's that that follow sports don't just you know follow sports for the enjoyment, but just don't get caught up into the whole. Uh, narrative that the referees are in some capacity hoping to try to steer two opponents to each other for for ultimate ratings as, to help, have to, as opposed to having two teams, Utah uh, meeting up with the Toronto Raptors in the finals. They know most people <laughs> not going to want to watch that. Right. So the league trying to pro- I get I can see it protecting that in certain interests to want to put their two big guys against each other. And I get that. But uh, let's talk about the referee. Uh, uh, attempts in this game uh, to try to uh, constantly the last three games is now is 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 now a trend now disparity well, huge disparity. Let's talk about those this, disparities. This, this goes against uh, the common belief of all the commentators out there. All your all your analysts were saying, oh, they just need to get home. They'll get more calls at home. Didn't work. Well, the Warriors come in our house and they get more calls than we do. Yes, on tit for tat files. I've seen uh, Ian Clark. Got fouled on a three point shot. Somebody else got fouled on a three point. They don't call it. AD's getting fouled all in the paint. They don't call it. You know they they let it go. But if you sneeze on a Warriors player, they blowing the whistle. So I mean it, it's pretty obvious if you got two eyes at this point. Um, we're just gonna have to keep tooting that horn, man, till they hit. But um, you see what it is. Anybody who's watching the Pelicans game, see what it is. If you listen to the crowd when the game was going on, the whole crowd knew what it was. So uh, it's it's not really a secret at this point. Um, if you don't see it, you just don't want to see it. So that's pretty much all I can say. Uh, you got 11, uh, what, free throw attempts by the Pelicans and 26 by the Warriors. And who was in the paint more? I mean, when you go in the paint, you're getting fouled. So how come you're not getting any of the calls? It's just real weird. And uh, we just got to keep grinding away and maybe get even more aggressive. Uh, Drew Holiday did well, and a lot of those foul attempts went to him because he made a decision to go into the paint and not take no for an answer. He made them almost tackle him, and they had to call a call. So I think we're going to have to follow uh, maybe in Drew Holiday's footsteps if we want to get on the line more because they're not going to give us the, I guess the superstar LeBron Steph Curry type file. It's a shame too, because Andy Davis plays his heart out every game, and uh, it's just in the playoffs he's a different animal, and it's just not getting that respect. Well, guess what? How you get that respect? You got to knock off other guys uh, who they think is superior, and I think the Pelicans right. are playing with a chip on the shoulder. Drew Holiday is now reached. Uh, a level above uh, Super Saiyan God. He's now uh, at uh, Drew Holiday Ultra Instinct. And I think it's one of those things where these teams, <laughs> they kind of use Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Super reference to my uh, Dragon Ball people out there. If you don't know what Dragon Ball is, don't worry about it. I'm not talking about nothing. But anyway, um, but yeah, that's that. That's the major moves uh, that the Pelicans are making and it's Nikolai Miritich. And, and it, it, they have, I believe that we could be a champion. I believe despite the fact that we lost our owner, despite the fact that we left lost one of our best players in DeMarcus Cousins, we we still can win this thing uh, without, you know, with all that loss. It ungalvanized us into a team and we're here to knock you off and show you that we for real. And, and there it is. But anyway, let's move forward into the preview section of. Uh, uh, with the Golden State Warriors and the New Orleans Pelicans. Game going down on Sunday, right. 2.30 Central Time. So we got a a, a, a mid-afternoon up. game. A lot better than people have to worry about. A lot of fussing going on, man. Why y'all putting these games on this so on this so late? Let's get some afternoon games. And that's a really great time to have a playoff basketball game in the Big Easy Sunday at 
thirty, almost close to that three that three thirty mark on afternoon games and red afternoon games we might have in the Superdome. So still in all the Pelicans uh, coming into this, trying to finish this thing, tighten it up again, get it back to uh, two games or two, and make it a make it a, a series, a best of three. Uh, is what the Pelicans and main intentions are. And uh, what we see here, D.C., going ahead, man, I know I'm going to give you some extended time to make your prediction and talk about um, what you believe will happen in the game. And, I, and I, of course, I say my little uh, tidbits well, after you do yours. You got, you got your giblets. You always home, Tid, man. Tidbits. You got tidbits. Uh, two things going on here, man. You have the Pelicans with supreme confidence after blowing them out. And you also got a mad Warriors team. So um, the Warriors are definitely not going to come in here and let you blow them out again. Uh, it's going to be a close game. We're going to have to go all the way down to the end probably or at least the last four to five minutes before the game is decided. But I see the Pelicans taking this one because they know their playoff lives depend on it. They went to Oracle. They know what to expect there. They know it's a very tough place to get a, a victory. And uh, they know they got to make these count at home. So I see them doing that. Um, but I also see the Warriors coming back fierce, and uh, they they gonna be ready to play. So it's gonna be probably one of the best games of the series this next game. But I see the Pelicans winning it by five. Okay, by five. That's that's very that's that's strong commentary. And uh, you know, I think the and we've called it before about the Pelicans, and we spoke about it previously. I think you're right on that. I, I just think who's gonna be the more matter team here? I just think New Orleans is still upset. You know, uh, we're, we're not done yet. It's going to be a game of superstars here. Yeah. Right. It, it, but, you know, the key part is, like we just like we made the little comment earlier about the fact that the role players and the bench guys play better at home. They're more comfortable and they're going to show right. up. So I look toward, like Shaquille O'Neal says, the others to help out. We know what Anthony Davis is going to bring. He's going to be he's going to be absolutely tremendous. So is Drew Holiday. He's going to be awesome. And we can expect a, a, a triple double out of Rajon Rondo in this game. Ian Ian uh, Moore will do his thing, but the others outside of Nikolai Miritich, Drew Holiday, and Anthony Davis will be huge in this game for New Orleans simply because they'll be energized by those what twelve thousand plus, oh, not twelve, about eighteen thousand plus fans screaming to the top of their long twirling shirts and everything. Oh, it's going to be absolutely tremendous. It's going to be lovely. And I think feeding that on. And then, and I'm going to make another bold prediction here. I'm going to just go out on a limb and say in this game, we're going to actually get more calls than the Golden State Warriors. What? In this contest, you that? yes. They got to give you at least one because right. it's, it's, it's going to become way too obvious if you win all these games, even the home games, and allow Golden State to get more foul calls. In, in, in you, there's such a thing. We accept home cooking. We know that the referees give home cooking, but you're going to have to give home cooking in one of these games. And I think this is the game for whether where the referees have no choice but to give the Pelicans more foul calls in this game than they would do the Golden State Warriors. I just that's just my take. Right. I think the Pelicans going to be angry, but Golden State's thinking, you know, that Golden State's Golden State. You know, they're going to Steph Curry's going to come out. He's going to shoot the ball really well. Kevin Durant is going to do his thing. Clay Thompson's going to have a drop off. Draymond Green's going to step up his defensive play. But I just think that the Pelicans all when you look at it overall, the Pelicans have more, more uh, determination, more, you know, more uh, a reason to needing to step up. If they know they lose this game and go back to the uh, to Golden State, go back to Oracle, they're in trouble. So they have absolutely no right. choice. They still in the must win situation. Uh, as they were in uh, by winning the game tonight. So, hey, man, they have to take care of business, keep the turnovers down, play that transition defense, uh, you know, circulate the ball, move, and they'll get the calls, I think, in this particular contest. Now, uh, moving forward, DC, we still got a few minutes left, at least a couple minutes left before the podcast end. Any honorable mentions you want to talk about? Which player to you, among the Pelicans that you feel must have, or maybe you can mention two of them, uh, three, whatever. Uh, which ones do you think outside? Yeah, of man, I'm going to go do? with the trio tonight, man. Uh, they, they, they reminded the Migos. <laughs> uh, yeah, AD, Drew Holiday, and Rondo, man. Uh, I can't take anything away from either one of them. To me, uh, statistically, AD had the best night. But when you look at impact and what they did, all three of them were just as equally uh, necessary. And if you take away what either one of them did, 
And you might uh you can even throw Ian Clark and Meritage in there, man. It's a complete team effort tonight. Um so I if I had a game ball to give, I'd give it to all of them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it was that type of game. I was so impressed and everybody was efficient, man, and they uh they played uh, it's as good as a game as you possibly can play against the Warriors. They had turnovers, but uh Man, they shot 45% from three-point line, 50% from field goal. Man, it's, it's a great game, and everybody contributed. Uh, I can't speak uh, highly enough of all the players. Um, everybody who got a chance to get out there tonight in that starting line, I did what they did. And you had some guys come off the bench and perform as well. So, Absolutely, man. Uh, they did terrific, and as far as the – postseason go playoffs the Pelicans Anthony Davis man is behind LeBron James and James Harden in scoring averaging almost 30 points a game 29.7 Rajon Rodno leading in the assists during the playoffs with almost 13 assists a game AD's the top block man averaging almost 3 blocks a game as the Pelicans are showing you man that hey we're not gonna go away but anyway Thank you for joining us today on the Pelican Post Game Report on the P. Barber Old Media Network. As always, if you like the show, donate, share, uh, whatever. Go to patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network and become a patron. Share the show, join our social media feeds, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, all that stuff. You know, look, check the links for all our social media platforms. From me in DC, thank you for joining us tonight. Peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease. Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell die bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log into the poshlifestyle.com. Once again, that is the poshlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, A Guide to Positive Child Self-Image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational 
inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. What is big? Big is taking flight. Big is sending back that wheat sauce. Big is ball handling that sets the hardwood on fire. New Orleans Pelicans, do it big.